Infinity Designer, you can't apply live filter effects directly. There's no feature in the layer menu to do this, but what you can do, you can create motion blur effects like this or many others by using a combination with Affinity Photo. You need Affinity Photo. So if you haven't got that, there's no feature available in that sense. I have got a photo, version 2.6, doesn't matter, 2.5, 2.4. However, I think there is a slight change with 2.6 that I must admit I was not aware of. So I'm just gonna show that. Let's start completely fresh. So file and new, click right, and I'm gonna create a star again. So here's the star, basic star, and I'm gonna go with, or maybe fill it with a gradient or something. Let's go with swatches so you can see a bit more color. So let's just, something like that. Yes, I go with that. I think that's much nicer and a bit more color there for the star. So once you've got this, what you can then do is go to file, and edit in photo. And this is where the change is. I'm quite certain, maybe I'm wrong, but edit in photo, I haven't got 2.5 to compare it with now. So comes up with this, requires you to save it. I don't know why, before I'm quite certain that it was just purely an internal file format. So you would just say, you didn't have to do all the save or cancel. Personally, I find this slightly awkward feature, but still, let's go for save. So you have to think quickly of a file name, I'm gonna go with three because I've obviously created some earlier. So now three dot there. So I've saved it to a file, saved it to a folder as well. And now I'm in Affinity Photo. If Affinity Photo wasn't open at this point, it would load up and start for you. And it goes into this and you can see your star now. Looks exactly the same. Now go here to the move tool. Don't know why it defaults always to the hand, but still let's just go with the move tool. You can resize it. And also you can go to layer and down to new live filter layer. And I'm gonna go with blur and motion blur. You could use all these or any of the others as well, perfectly reasonable. There's lots of distortion things, but blur, motion blur. So motion blur, by default, you have to actually blur it. But she actually had a default where you could actually set a default. So something like that as your, immediate response. Always annoyingly, it starts at zero. I don't know why they did it that way. Personally, I'd prefer a feature where it remembers the last used value. Right, so we've got this, and now you can then, you could merge it. But I don't want to do that because I want it to still be live in Designer. So just close it. Now you can also use this as well. It creates nice color manipulation inside the actual star if you use Preserve, but let's just Turn that off and close. So now if you go over to layers, you can span this out and you can see your motion blur. So with this, you can now go back into designer. And this is again, what happens when you go to file, because you think, oh great, I can just go back, edit in designer. And it comes up with this, save it again. I find that slightly frustrating. Again, it's a slight feature that, why did they do this? Because I think it should automatically save it. I'm editing designer, I want to go back, Yes, just save it. It should be an assistant. It should immediately know that I want to save it instead of saying cancel. I don't know why they offer that option, but still, let's go with it and click save. And then we're back in Designer. So now in Designer, you can see exact same as before. You've got here, but you've now got the motion blur effect. But now also, you can go over here and you can double click here and you can bring up the panel and you can manipulate it so you can just like this. So in designer now, you can change this, move this backwards and forwards, move that, change opacity, blend mode, etc. as well as preserve alpha as well, if you want to do that. And close there. Now you can also just delete it as well. Now it's not now in Affinity Photo. So you could actually go back to Affinity Photo. Let's just go back to Affinity Photo and you will see you haven't got anything open. Very strange that, I know. However, let's go back to designer and you can manipulate this further of course you can add additional ones now you've got it you can duplicate it so motion blur right click and you can duplicate you can delete etc so duplicate do that so you've got two so you can do a bit of functionality as well like that and you can modify these two so they're obviously not related now also what you can do is go over here and let's set like the star and when you select the star here using the move tool, you got points. So you can just say, oh, I want, I don't want that. I want maybe more. 
So you can change this, it's still live. So I'm going to put it at three. And also what you do in the radius, you can vary this. Outer circle, you can vary that. So you can create a lovely sort of flower-like design. Inner circle, you can change that as well. No, doesn't look noticeably that much of an impact. And also what you can do, you can always still go here to effects. So just click here, layer effects, and you can go for maybe 3D. Let's just go for one of them, 3D. And you can see then you can create a lovely three-dimensional effect with that motion blur as well and close. And there you have it. Again, you can always go back, file, edit in photo, but you of course will be asked whether you want to save it or not as well. So please put in the comments below if you find this feature really useful. I think it's really useful. I think it's a great feature. I think the way it's done now, it's slightly more unusual. I personally wish it was completely seamless. I don't see that you should have to save it. It should be just an internal format where it puts it to a location and then uses that. But however, this is the way to do it. Save it to a file and then you can edit in photo design it backwards and forwards. Also, please subscribe and a like or dislike. Always appreciated. Bye.